Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how you can incorporate Docu into an EC2 instance on AWS. So let's get started. I just signed in to AWS and this is the management console you'll first get taken to. So I'm going to click on EC2. And up here in the top right, I'm going to launch a new instance and then type Ubuntu into the search bar. And you can use a different OS, but I'm going to use Ubuntu. And then I'm going to use Micro, Review and Launch. And then in Security Groups, I'm going to edit that. And then add HTTP in there. And then this is good. And I'm going to do the same for HTTPS. HTTPS. And then all that looks good. So I'm going to review and launch. Go through everything again. Yeah, it all looks good. So I'm going to launch. And for this, I'm going to create a new key pair and call it um, tutorial. And then download the key pair and then launch the instance. So now our EC2 instance is running and you can get to this screen by coming over here and clicking on this, this link. So I'm gonna click on this instance ID and that'll bring up some information right here. And then I'm gonna click connect and then I'm gonna copy this. So now that I've gotten that SSH information, I opened up PowerShell you can also open up the terminal if you're on Linux or Mac. And then I'm going to CD into the directory, which contains that SSH key that I downloaded. So it's still in downloads for me, but if you're doing this for real, you probably want to change the folder that that's in. So I'm going to CD into downloads and then paste in that SSH information. So when, it, when you get this message, just type in yes. And now you are in your EC2 instance. So first thing I'm gonna do is sudo apt-get update. So now you can head over to the docu documentation or I'm gonna have uh, an article pasted in the link of the description, which you can follow the steps there. And then here you'll see for Debian systems, install via apt-get. So I'm gonna click here and then just follow these instructions, copying and pasting. So let's copy over this first command. And then to paste into this terminal, uh, you have to right click on your mouse. So now that that's done, let's do the second command. Okay, this command can only be used by root. So when you get that, you just have to put sudo in front of it and you'll be good. Let's do the next one. Now this one. Permission denied, so do the same thing, but put sudo in front of t. So sudo apt get update. And then install docu. So sudo. Yes. So enable Nginx vhost, I'm going to put yes. So host name or IP for server. So we're going to change this later. So I'm just going to have docu.me go with that. Enable vhost based deployments. Um, I'm going to go with yes. And then for this stuff, uh, I'm just going to accept. 
And when you get to the screen again, I'm just going to click OK. OK, with that finally installed, let's do the last line here. Let's go ahead and create an app. And you do that with the command docu apps create. And I'm going to call it tutorial. But call this whatever you want. And then let's just make sure it created that with docu apps list. And there you go. All right, so let's add our code into that docu instance. So the first thing you'll need to do is have Git installed. And then once you do that, go to your repository and run this command, which is git remote add docu docu app. And make sure that this user is docu. They specify that heavily in the documentation. So docu at then the IP address of your server, which you can find on that AWS dashboard. And then this is mine. And then after that, you input your app name that you just created. So we did tutorial. Then you do git add, git commit dash m initial commit and then you'll do git push docu master uh, master and oh we get a permission denied so we need to add a ssh key to this docu instance and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so let's clear this and then use SSH keygen. And then um, I already have ID RSA, but just uh, go with this. Just press enter until you're done pretty much, but I'm gonna cancel out of this. So clear. And then um, we need to add that key to our docu instance. So now that you've got that SSH key created, go ahead and run this command. All right, so basically we're writing the contents of this SSH key over to our EC2 instance, and then we're adding it to docu with this command of docu SSH keys add, and then you can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call the key Jeremy. And there you go, it should work now. So let's go ahead and do git push docu master. So after everything, this is the link that it says the application is deployed at, so I'm gonna head there. And this is the screen that we get whenever we head to that link. Okay, so head back to your EC2 instance and run, run the command docu domains report. So here are the domains that we have for our tutorial app. And we want to change those. So you can change them to your IP address, or you can create a domain. Let's just change them to the IP address for now. And then I'll show you later how you can create a free domain and then add it in. So let's run the command docu domains to see the API that we can use. So docu domains remove global is probably what we want to use and then docu.me okay docu domains report so and then we want to get rid of this too so docu domains remove um, tutorial and then tutorial dot docu dot me so with those removed what do we want to add there well let's add our IP address so I'm going to go to the AWS EC2 instance and copy that over. Um, 
the public one that is. So docu domains add dash global. So now that it's added globally, let's also add that for the vhost domain. Docu domains add uh, tutorial and then that. So when you go to your IP address, you get this. But this is only happening because we're using the HTTPS protocol. You need to use HTTP and you'll see that there's your app right there. And also if you're not getting this, just try and restart the docu instance and it might work. If you're using Node, make sure that you have a start script in the package.json file. So now we want to enable HTTPS. So let's go to a website called freenom.com and get ourselves a free domain. So the, the weird thing about this is that if you type in a domain name and check for the availability and go like get it now, it'll all say not available. But if you type in that same domain name with the extension, it'll, it'll be available all of a sudden. So go to checkout. I'm gonna get this for like, uh, we'll, let's go 12 months free. Continue. Enter in your email address. All right, so once you get to this page, go ahead and enter in all this information and then go to the bottom and click continue. So now that you're on this page, go click here to go to client area. Okay, you get the 401. So just go back to freenom.com and go back here. So just go back to freenom.com and sign in with the email address and password that you just created. So first thing you'll wanna do is go to services, my domains, manage domain, and then management tools, name servers. Okay. So, and then use custom name servers. So I'm gonna use Cloudflare for the HTTPS, but you can also use Let's Encrypt, and that's actually what they suggest in the docu documentation. But I think Cloudflare is better just because it allows you to use analytics and has different, um, different services you can use if your app does get bigger which includes like caching and different different things so let's go to cloudflare.com and sign up all right so now that we've just signed into cloudflare let's go ahead and add a site go ahead and input whatever site name you had or whatever domain name you had add site and then Go to the bottom, click free, and these are what you get, DDoS attack mitigation, um, CDN, and then documentation, free SSL certificate, so review DNS records. Okay, so once you're here, add a record, type A, and then at. Or you can use uh, whatever. You can either use at if you just want it to be the base, 
or if you're going to host multiple um, Docu instances on this, you might want to use uh, use a name like Tutorial. Use the name of whatever your app was. So let's just go ahead and use at here, and then add the IP address for whatever um, your EC2 instance was. So let's go back here. This was the IP address, and let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. Go ahead and save. Okay, continue. And now we just need to go here and click to copy these and go back into your Freenom account. Um, paste these. And then change name servers. And then let's uh, say done, check name servers, and then configure recommendations. Uh, apply recommendation here and then enable auto minify apply that and then let's go to overview page so that should be getting set up now we need to go to our docu instance and change out those domain names okay so let's do the command docu domains set dash global and then the name of your domain node jsapp.tk and then docu domains report report okay so that's all good let's clear that docu domains now let's run docu domains set um, tutorial and then Node.js app .tk. So now that those have both been changed, let's go ahead and head back to the web browser. So let's go ahead and type in the domain name .tk. And there we go. And as you can see, uh, connection is secure. So that's how you can do it with Cloudflare. You can also do it with Let's Encrypt. Um, also, one thing that I ran into um, when deploying my actual application was that I had to set environment variables. So go ahead and look up the documentation for that. Um, docu config set with environment variables and just follow this. Also, when you're adding environment variables, make sure to add this in, the no restart, because without it, I kept running into issues where the EC2 instance would just brick. It would just stop, which was pretty annoying. And every time that that happens, I had to stop it and then restart it, which caused the EC2 instance to get a new IP address. So just make sure that you add this in and then once you're done adding all of the environment variables in, um, then you can just restart the Docker or Docu instance with Docu PS and then restart, or uh, you can push it again from your repository. That also worked. But yeah, I hope that helped, and uh, thank you for watching.